we regularly cover the countless gigantic ancient megaliths which can fortunately still be found within the ruins of antiquity all over the world. Enigmatic, often inexplicable relics of a forgotten age that due to their controversial existence are either ignored by mainstream funded explorations, subsequently obscured, overlooked by the greater world, or simply attributed to a culture once incapable of such undertakings. Once one is presented with the facts regarding these building blocks, their weights, the precision of the original execution, and the many other characteristics which elude academic explanation, it is easy to see why an academic world who continue to refuse even the smallest consideration in regards to the possibility of a lost chapter of human history, this regardless of the fact that said artifacts are rather ironically all undeniable evidence for their existence. One cannot only discover the motivation behind such denials, but the many tactics used to dodge such areas of study. For not only do we regularly explore these incredible megalithic legacies, but they are all too often attributed to a more recent, permitted, and thus funded, subsequently well-studied periods of ancestry. And our next item of interest is of no exception. We have in the past covered a number of the astonishing ancient megaliths that can be found dotting ancient Egypt, the Colossus of Memnon, which apparently once sung at night, each car from a single block of granite, and each weighing in at over 1,000 tons. We have exposed the enormous stones which form the Great Pyramid's inner skeletons, along with many others found across the plateau and beyond, all of which tell of a lost knowledge and capability, unquestionably indicative of advanced ancient civilization. Pompeii's Pillar, located within Alexandria, is truly one of the wonders of the ancient world. One of the largest monoliths on Earth, 20 meters in height, and with a diameter of nearly 3 meters at its base, this enormous column was once sourced and carved from one single block of Aswan Quarry's pink granite, and it is estimated to weigh an impressive 290 tons. Anyone within heavy goods, modern construction, will understand just how massive this pillar is, and indeed, just what an incredible feat it was for this ancient civilization to have once created such architecture. Pompeii's pillar is so big that to claim such accomplishments were made within the Roman era or before, when even modern man has great difficulty moving such weights, even the smallest of distances, we feel is preposterous. Like that of the obelisk of Axum, which was unfortunately toppled, giving the obelisk its modern title of the toppled obelisk. This monolith is estimated to have weighed far more, yet was once erected somehow by an ancient ancestor. However, we feel, although at some time within the past, a concerted effort to destroy this legacy was undertaken. The pillar's enormous base made toppling it impossible by a later, less capable culture. Muslim traveler Ibn Patuta visited Alexandria in 1326 AD. Having shot an arrow tied to a string over the pillar, he successfully climbed over it. He was later followed in early 1803 by British commander John Shortland of HMS Pandur. After he flew a kite over the pillar, again successfully getting a rope over it, on February 2nd, he and John White, Pandur's master, climbed it. When they got to the top, they displayed a Union Jack, drank a toast to King George III, and gave three cheers. Four days later they would climb the pillar again, after fixing a weather vane, they ate a beefsteak and again toasted the king. Who built Pompey's pillar? How did they move and erect it? Is this pillar the only surviving remnant of a past, enormous ancient structure? Or merely a single standing column? And if so, why? Why create just one pillar? Pompey's pillar is undoubtedly an amazing relic, left to us from a bygone era, and as such, highly compelling.